of the drum. Oh, won't you dance to the rhythm of the drum? And hopefully we'll find new worlds beyond the sun. Where well, we'll dance, dance to the rhythm of the drum. Welcome to Pop 1993, and thank you, Strawberries Charts. Some beautiful horn work there, Vic. Thank you. No worries. It was lovely. I enjoyed every moment of it. I enjoyed listening to it. Your horn's a bit smaller than mine. It is, at a slightly higher note. Thanks very oh, much. Thank you. So, great to see you here. How many is in the group? Uh, just four. Really? Just four. That's marvellous, isn't it? Okay. And who's the best? Uh, we can take it in turns. And could I ask you what national insurance contributions you pay? Uh, class D. Are you on a D? I okay. D. <laughs> I'll just go and get some no, fags. No, class I'll be here. D. What? I do apologise about him. <laughs> I'll just go and get some fags and you interrupt the music. I bet you didn't even, even, <laughs> even, even, even hear the song, did you? I was, I was just concentrating on the question. What's the matter with you? Well, if you're going to ask questions, don't ask them about tax matters, eh? All right, then. Some decent questions. OK. Would you put your hand deep into some manure um, in order to retrieve a loved one's sentimental brooch? Mm. Um, depends how valuable the brooch were. It was. <laughs> but you, you know, yeah, I would do, You'd yeah. actually think yeah, about it, Yeah, I would it, do, then. yeah. Oh, that's so, fair yeah. enough. That's fair enough, yeah. OK. Um, that's the sort of thing you're interested in, is it, Vic? Yes, it is. Brooch retrieval. Cut the kettle of pop. I'm going to predict you pop four tunes. <laughs> Don't fear the pot. What's the point of that? You know, I'll be fear gentle. It'll, it'll, it'll care it. for you, right? I'll, I'll fear, feel it. Touch it and I'll stare deeply into it now. Uh -huh. Oh, it's good news. <laughs> In one year's time, you will join the army. Oh, Money. <laughs> Think a bit deeper. Uh -huh. In um, <sighs> one year's time also, you'll turn into a beautiful swan. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's and in about ten seconds' time, you're going to be shot by a member of the Rolling Stones. That is a terrible thing. Is over there. <laughs> oh, he's here as well. I'm off. Ow! What's happened, singer? I've been shot in the bloody foot. Oh no! It was that Keith Richard out of the Rolling Stones band. Ooh. Right, just before we start. All right. Rule one, no arson. Don't be daft. Ah, no rule two, no perjury. Good one. Rule two's a good one. Rule three, absolutely no treason. Rule four, if you're going to thieve, no petty theft, no petty theft, right. just top crime thieves. Because people are recidivists. Right. Theft, GBH, arson. Don't do it. And there's a lot of arsonists about. So not mentioning any names, no, but most of them in cure. Most of the men, the cure. Yeah, Don't okay. dart about. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't. Here, we'll act this one out, right? Don't dart. Don't dart about. Vic, would you like a bit of Swiss roll? I've got some over here. I'd love some, Bob. Thanks. Well, come and get it, but don't dart. OK. Swiss roll, sir? Yes, I'd love some, thanks. Oh, it's uh, rather a more of an Arctic roll, but never mind, I'll still have a portion. It still illustrates the Doesn't point, matter. you see. Doesn't even matter if it's no Swiss rolls. No problems. Roll. It's if you lovely. Want, 
lovely piece of fruit. Don't. I tell you another thing. Crab apple. It's a lovely fruit. Use it. Use it whenever you can. Oh, there's a crab apple tree. You usually walk on by. Why? You've been daft. Another Great thing fruit. is, don't shout your name out. If someone asks you your name, don't shout it out. Don't say, my name is Bob. Eh? Doesn't that sound daft? It sounds stupid. You wouldn't get Gentle Jesus doing that. It's a, my name is Gentle Jesus. So take, an, you know, take a bit of advice there Just from Gentle Jesus. Just do that. Jesus. If you're going to make jewellery, simple rule, you're an amateur. It's a difficult trade. Silversmith's trained for over 17 years sometimes. Don't use gold or precious jewels. Use cheap items. A little bit of sawdust, perhaps a little bit of a little bit of this, for example. You practice it. You'll get better. Your time will come. Bob, Bro I'm asking about. He's asking about. He's being daft. Bob, I'm asking about because the rules are stupid. Are they? Can we have a bit of music, please? Pop music. Don't. I was saying, you know, I like... don't start with that again. Really? Do you want some Swiss roll? <laughs> You came close, close but no cigar You didn't miss by far You know you came this close Close but no cigar Thomas Dolby and that lovely song, Close, but no cigar, no cigar, no cigar, no cigar, sir, no cigar. I shan't ask again. No cigar. It's a cry that uh, goes out at the Ritz every day. Would you like a cigar, sir? No, no cigar. Close, but no cigar. No thank you, sir. No cigar. Yeah, uh, we were lucky enough to bump into Kim Bazell in the park drinking some cider with some of her friends and we've asked her to come along to answer some questions, so... Can we just fire away, Kim? Ah, uh, yeah, fire You're away. You're ready to receive our impertinent questions? Yes, I'm ready to receive them. Well, Kim, I'd like to ask you this question, it's been on my mind for some time. Kim, are you a very coarse woman or are you really rather sophisticated? Uh, I would say I'm very sophisticated. Really? Definitely. Not coarse in the slightest? No. Oh, not in the slightest. Oh, not at all. Very well. no. Lovely answer. Sophisticated. For a oh, side no, drinker. Can't you tell? Yes, Kim. actually I can, oh. you know. <laughs> Kim, would you wear a special harness uh, if you were carrying meat? No, I'd carry it no. between my teeth or something. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, carry it, <laughs> I think, yeah. You know, Kim, if you woke one morning to find your barn at your hair was on fire, would you, like, douse it with the pint of lager or something? Or just leave it, you know, forget about it, just go back to sleep? <laughs> I'd just leave it just and go back it. to sleep. Just yeah. leave it. <laughs> Quite right, too. So. we all would, wouldn't we? Yeah, I'd Kim, just leave it. Yes, darling. If you killed a fly, would you be tempted in any way to put the white stuff that came out of its, like, belly, right, in your special droppings pot? Um... I've got to think about that. I really yeah, don't know, Bob. One, that's, that, yeah, that one's tricky, very tricky. I'm not... Okay, no, that's fine. Is that okay? That's fine. Right. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Okay. Can, a question that's... I've yes. it on. Have you ever, you know, done it? Me? You know. You know. Oh, no, never. Never? Ooh. Will never. you one day, though, perhaps? Well, I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking it? about yeah, doing too. it, but, um... I'm a bit frightened, I'm afraid. Yeah, me too. Use yeah. polystyrene balls. Yes. Yeah. Finally, do you have another question? Well, I'd just like finally to see uh, Kim draw a cow on the blackboard. Could oh, you do that, that for us? Could you have a, a cow? One? Yes, we've um, got some cows first. All right, excuse me, I'll just uh, yeah, stay joke, over yeah. this way. Um, you we know you've had a bit of cider, but have a go. It, it's just a cow's head. Um, Let's have a look. I think that's probably a horn. <laughs> what is it? 
Yeah. <laughs> um, an eye. That's it. That's a cow. <laughs> hey! That's a fish. It is a fish, isn't it? Uh, well, that's my cow. That's a good <laughs> And it's a very it's nice a cow, very nice kid. Cow. Shall we go and get some cider then? Yeah, let's go get some cider. Do you like kebabs? <laughs> no. Would you like to arm wrestle me? Hello, my name is Rick Wakeman, and I'm a keyboard wizard. Hello, my name's Brian Eno, also a keyboard wizard. And we'd like to just take a few moments of your time to take you on a voyage around the synthesizer. <laughs> the synthesizer. Where did it all begin, Mr Eno? It all began on the first day you and I met. That's right. Shall we tell them about how we did meet? Yes, if you know how we met. <laughs> <laughs> of course I know how we met, Mr. Eno. How foolish of you. <laughs> well, of course, myself and Mr. Eno were performing... Well, I was actually performing on an airfield. I was accompanying the bombers as they went off to Dresden, playing Tell Laura I Love Her. Now, you'll notice there, Mr. Workman wasn't startled by that rather unpleasant noise. That's because he's a professional. That noise, when you first thought of it, used to startle people, didn't it? It did. It was a very abrasive noise. Now then, you can use the uh, synthesizer in very many ways. You can use it, for instance, at a funeral if your uncle has recently died and you're attending the funeral and you wish to accompany it on your synthesizer. Do so in a very gentle way. Don't use a hoarse, uh, abrasive sound like mm. a, an irritating buzz, as this will startle the, uh, no, no, the sorry mourners. To, sorry and to butt in, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Reno, yes. You don't want to dominate the proceedings, do you, with a natural sound? No. Remember that. Because you'll ostracise yourself from the family group and be no longer welcome in the homes anymore. Right. As I was. Wise words from a wise old wizard. Now, these sounds that we uh, make are made in a variety of ways. I've recently added a popper dom to my synthesizer. Um, not as you might think to spice it up. No, that's just a silly pun, isn't it? It is a stupid pun. Um, but rather to add depth to the sound. Possibly. I've incorporated a tomato onto my oh. synthesizer to give depth and a challenging new sound for, yes. the, for the listener. What we'd like to do now is sing you a little song. It may seem puerile to you, the listeners, but to synthesizer wizards, it's kind of a, a hymn, isn't it? It is, Mr Eno. OK, then. Shall we begin? Can you feel me sitting near you? No, I can't, but I can hear you. The joy you bring in the words you sing is dear to me. A little child in the gutter crawling towards some butter. <laughs> Will it work from the task? Will he smirk? We can only wait and see.
pop music at its best from Milan. All right, girls, enjoy that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed you best. Would you like some cider, love? Um, no, thank you. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll have to. That was great, girls. All right, thank Bob. You. Oh. Hey, I, thought hey. you, I thought you were at the swimming baths today, Vic. No, I turned up here. Hey, I couldn't be bothered going. Like, Anyone want a fag? Look, I've got um, fags in different colours. Look, oh, all no, different colours. Like don't smoke. Very bad for you. You do right not to smoke. I don't either. No, well, here, I've got a oh, plain yeah. one. Do you want a plain one? No, no, no. no. Leave them be, Vic, will you? Do you want to feel my muscle? Look, I'm a fan of that. No. <laughs> it's like a sponge, isn't it? Spend you anything. Get away, it's like I've all done that. Come on, show me the stomach. Show me that one. Watch this. Look, you all the fags. Take us in the stomach. You know, how does he like? Go on, he's like stale. Take him. Go on. Take him, go for it. Oh, dear. oh, that's done him. Oh, Do you know I think that's got one of his pipes? Someone <laughs> Someone has gone. Come on, let's oh, go to the fire. You ruined that for me. You can see your bra. <laughs> the erasure story. Or the Prince of Pop and his pauper pal. Whoa! On the 12th of June, 1953, two boys were born yards apart in the same hospital. One was to be taken home to be raised in sumptuous splendour. The other was discarded after being horribly mutilated and scarred by a beast that had lain dormant in the bowels of the hospital for thousands of years. The lives of these two boys would, however, always remain inextricably linked. Vince, the pampered child, developed into a spoilt, ill-mannered and spiteful youth. Often, for his own perverted pleasure, he would force his servants to bounce naked on a circle of makeshift trampolines around a burning pile of hair care products. But he soon grew bored and restless until one day he chanced upon a simpleton who entertained patients as they queued at the outpatient's ward of the local hospital. Insanely jealous of the simpleton's skills, Vince immediately purchased him that he might con the world that the simpleton's skills were, in fact, his own. All he needed now was a singer. Meanwhile, the other child, Belle, was raised under the protective gaze of the hospital beast, whose ancient surgical techniques had healed his scars. He'd developed into a most handsome young man. The day, of course, came when he had to leave the hospital cellar. All he knew of the outside world was the haunting keyboard melodies he occasionally heard drifting through the ventilation ducts beneath the outpatient's ward. He knew he must find the source of these wondrous sounds. He headed straight for outpatients, where his and Vince's eyes immediately met, and Erasure was born. With Bell's good looks and limited vocabulary, and Vince's endless supply of money, they bought their way to the top of the charts where they remain today. But even now, as they perform before thousands of adoring fans, a light breeze briefly lifts a corner of the backdrop to reveal, for a fleeting moment, the simpleton playing his tunes. But what, you may ask, of the beast? <laughs> That's right. It's an industrial glove. It needs to move easily. Moves easily. Moves easily. Thumb, four fingers. It moves easily. Moves easily. Fucking easy. And now, pop news. Pop news this week. Carmel, ex singer, caught her hand on a little bit of wire on the edge of her sieve this week, Ooh. causing her a bit of, a bit of distress. It there. would do. She was probably cooking a little, maybe a pudding. Maybe. Hmm? Chris Rea, the singer from the North East, was distraught this week when he noticed that one of the tiles in his kitchen had lifted up a little no. bit. No! That's terrible. Is he going to get someone in? No, he's going to get an estimate, but he thinks he's going to have a go himself. Mm, just to be honest. Best of luck with that, Chris. He's going to get an estimate first. Congratulations to Hazel O'Connor, ex-singer, who finally persuaded the council to remove an old mattress that's been in the front garden for the last six weeks. That's right, yeah, it's been quite an eyesore, that, hasn't it? Yes, but well done for really pursuing that one, Hazel. Mm. Well done there. Pop theft this week. We've got live film of two pop stars on The Thieve. The first one is uh, Tina Turner, who's been thieving shoes from a local shop in Stourbridge. Oh, Let's take a look at this. not again. And Naughty Tina. Let's hope that the police are really on her back after yeah. that one. Let's and hope they don't fit, actually, you know. Well, Maybe that'll put her off. She's only got one shoe, but 
Never mind, she's mm. only got one leg, mm. really. No, you know, one leg. <coughs> Now then, Brian Ferry, the saucy singer from the North East, from Ferry Hill, in fact, has been on The Thieve as well, and we've got him direct on film now, thieving a frisbee from one of his local shops. Let's take a look at this, naughty Brian. Naughty, naughty, naughty. He should know better, shouldn't he, Brian? He's naughty, naughty, isn't he? He's naughty, naughty, naughty. Very naughty, Brian. He's been coming on like a seventh sense. He but has. Let's hope that the police are on his back after this one. Mm. That's pop news for this week. Here's some more music. Mm. Nirvana and In Bloom. Mm. And interestingly enough, that was filmed in black and white, which isn't really used that often. Really? Days, is it? I have absolutely no concept of black and white. Really? Mm. Neither have I. In fact, I have no concept of colour either. No, I've noticed that about you. Occasionally, I can tell that you're only seeing vague shapes, mists, and some scaffolding. Exactly, because all I ever see is shapes, mists, colours, and sounds. Here is my song for you, Ray. Oh, you judges, where is my song? Very powerful music there from Denim. And it's uh, was something that was on my mind whilst watching you there, as I just wondered how much you weighed. Could I just test you? Could you get Because we suspect scale? sudden weight loss, don't we? We could see something. Yes, it's seven stone. Mm. As I suspected. Diarrhea. <laughs> A sudden bout of diarrhea. A recent bout. During the performance. 
And Diacam is a very good product. That's a very good product. You know, if that's of any use to you. Another thing is the hat's very nice, really, very sporty. But, but if someone, say, in the balcony was trying to alert you to a cut wrist or a very bad shoe you were wearing, you know, yeah. you might miss it. <laughs> you said, hey, your shoes, mate. You oh, your trousers are see down, me. your trousers could be down. Lacerated wrist, anything like that. Forget the hat, you know, you'd be able to see those people up in the balcony. Just a pop tip there for you. Mm. I hope you can okay. all take that on board. Is that OK? Yeah. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks very much, anyway. Bye. We hope we've helped in some way. If we haven't, we apologise. Good night. Good night. Oh, Mr Eno. Yes, Mr Wakeman. Please receive from me this lovely slice of bacon. Oh, Mr Wakeman. Yes, Mr Eno. I'll have that bacon with my scrambled egg -o. <laughs> Oh, Mr Eno. Yes, Mr. Wakeman. Would you like these button mushrooms with your bacon? Oh, Mr. Wakeman. Yes, Mr. Eno. Add a fried slice and I'll nearly have a full English breakfast, though. You will. Thank you very much for paying attention to us. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Good night. You buggered that up, didn't you? <laughs>